everybody welcome happy new year um hope you're well rested since we've got a new challenge starting for you this week um and with me i've got harun ali um who is an enterprise dna expert and also the co-founder of stellify bi and our regular data challenge ringmaster so um we're going to talk with him today about the current challenge which focuses on oe and so welcome harun and if you could just take a take a few minutes and just talk about what OE is and a little bit of the history behind where this challenge came from. Yeah, yeah. So OE is basically the, the, the gold standard used in manufacturing um, for manufacturing excellence. It kind of allows us to kind of rubber stamp how good we are at, at producing our goods. Um, and it's kind of made up of three key factors, which is availability, performance, and quality. So availability, we're kind of thinking... If I've got a machine, I, I want it to be available 24 hours a day or whatever period. Is it actually available for that time? Um, performance, if I'm expecting 50,000 biscuits to be produced an hour, have I got 50,000 biscuits out at the other end? Um, and the third point is quality. Um, you know, if I'm getting 50,000 biscuits, are there 50,000 good biscuits? Or, or how many bad biscuits are, am I producing in this run? Um, so it's kind of that overall efficiency of, of a production or machine. And does this does this come out of a, a case study that you've worked on? Yeah, yeah, de definitely. The, the, this is something you, you you'll see used across manufacturing. Um, uh, interesting, you might kind of mentioned manufacturing and, and is this used? Um, I think the principles in OE are used across every kind of uh, industry, whether that's IT uh, measuring kind of performance of your team. Um, I, I think that the three key things is the. The, the availability, performance, and quality, whatever process, whatever business, they're going to be interested in them three metrics um, in, in some sort of scenario. So I think what, what this kind of um, challenge will allow you to do is kind of go through the process of kind of thinking around how am I going to go and answer these questions um, for, for the business. And I think, you know, a lot of the content you, you'll kind of see around the way that Power BI is being positioned in, in, in kind of more recent times with streaming data sets and push data sets and, and kind of as your IoT hub being mentioned, I think that what that's doing is enabling a lot of these businesses to now have this capability of being able to report performance across machines and people. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this one, I think this one to me is very interesting, both in terms of kind of the broad applicability that you talk about. And also some of the challenges we have, the, the objective is a little bit less clear. You know, it's kind of like, tell me something interesting about the data. Whereas this one, it's, it's very specific metrics. It's, we've got very clear questions on this one. I think there's, there's no ambiguity as to what, what we're after in, in kind of the, the reporting on this challenge. Yeah. I, I, I... I'd agree to a certain extent that the, the principles are always the same. While OEE is very universal, um, except universally accepted as a measure, I think you know um, what you'll actually see in the industry is small variations, and and you know it, it's there's lies, there's more lies, and statistical lies. We're, we'll always try to make things look better than they actually are. Um, so you know it's not uncommon for. For, for people to exclude certain, ooh, that stoppage doesn't count, um, mm -hmm. or hearing stuff like that, uh, even when you're working with clients, right? That, that is quite a common thing. Um, but, you know, for, from a kind of high-level point of view, it's supposed to give you that bottom line. Are, am I doing well? And how am I doing against my competitors? Great, great. So I, I was wondering if you could just take a few minutes maybe and share screen and just kind of walk folks sure. through the uh the data and kind of what they'll be what they'll be working with in this challenge yeah so so kind of the scenario is that the the it team have kind of consolidated the data from from these sensors for you um uh, and and while i i'd say that you know the the data is in decent shape um definitely optimizations um can, can be made even even to the data model so so for this challenge is not really just focusing on the visualization or the calculation side. I think, you know, this definitely cuts across the four enterprise um, enterprise DNA pillars of, of development. Um, so kind of starting with the fact table, what we've got is basically each row is representing when we've had a stoppage on a particular machine. 
Um, and when we've had that stoppage, we've basically recorded the start of that stoppage. When that stoppage ends, um, and you've actually got a duration column already there, so it's calculated that in minutes, how long that stoppage was. And then what we've got here is the cumulative total that when this machine stopped, how many biscuits um, had been produced in that run at that time. Um, and then of them biscuits, how many was, was a good biscuit? Um, mm. And then we've actually got the category assigned for that stoppage. So, you know, what was it a changeover cleaning kind of stoppage? Was it actually there was no order running? Was there a, a technical stoppage? So, so you'll see quite a few categories under the OEE. Um, and then actually at that time, what, what was the product that was that we were trying to produce? So in this instance, we had we had jammy creams that, that were going through through the machine. Um, and then what you've kind of got to kind of supplement and, and in terms of attributes around this is the target speed. So for the respective machine and products, how many biscuits should I be producing an hour? So if I'm producing, you know, 51,840 biscuits an hour, my, 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 my operational efficiency is 100% there, right? Because I'm expecting 51 and I'm getting that. So from the fact we kind of want to be working out over an hour, are, are we kind of hitting this product and machine combination? Um, and then you've also got a product fact, which basically gives you more information. So you've got how many biscuits are, are in a pallet, uh, biscuits per pack and, and a case, just so you can kind of transfer between what um, people in the business will look at it in different ways. But I think what, what this does is kind of breaks down the units of a biscuit case. Um, and then finally, you've got some information about the machine. So very simple, you know, what, what is the machine type? Is it filling, boxing, topping? Um, and from the fact, what that should allow you to do is kind of say, you know, the stoppages that are occurring, you know, which machines are the worst, which are the best, um, and kind of break that down even by product. Um, so, yeah, kind of, I, I have slimmed this data set down, guys, like, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, just to, to kind of give you a bit of context, like this was huge. So kind of stripped it back down to basics because really want to get as many of you involved as possible. But I think, what you'll see is kind of these three or four key columns um, actually results in in quite quite a vast number of measures to, to kind of get to OEE properly um, mm -hmm. and allow that kind of oversight of being able to see that overall OEE and then drill into each of the factors that are kind of uh, contributing to the overall equipment effectiveness. Yeah, I, I can definitely see, you know, drilling down into individual machines and the categories and the products. Um, quick question, Haroon. Um, when you go to target speeds, is that total biscuits or, or good ones? This is ju just how many biscuits are expected in the other end. So if, if we were going for quality, I'd expect always to have 51,840 good biscuits, right? Okay. Because th this is basic. The, the target speeds is what the manufacturer has told me this machine can produce. That, that's a good way of looking at it. It's kind of, you know, uh, the the jammy creams plus the biscuit filling machine, it should produce 51,840 good biscuits every hour. Got it. When it's running, when it's running. Um, in general, for, for, for kind of a bit, bit more context, um, we're, we're assuming um, for, for this challenge, for, for this data set and for any of these machines that, that they should be running 24-7. Just to keep things simple, um, you know, uh, these machines run 24-7 every day of the week, every, every day of the year, right? It, it's just 365, ju just to keep it simple. But you can already see, right, different companies are going to have different schedules for different machines and how the right. complexity kind of quickly grows. Um, but I think, you know, getting this foundation in is, is going to be massive for, for a lot of people. Yeah, this is great. I mean, it, I, I love this kind of data because it's, it's very intuitive, to understand what it is, but I can already see the complexity in the analysis and um, in the reporting. So, yeah, uh, just, I mean, like if you look at the facts, like it's like five columns, people are probably thinking, well, th th this should be a couple of sums and I'll probably do a few averages and, and I'll be there. But I can assure you, once you start looking at the target speeds and, and trying to look into the analysis, um, you sh should, should, should be some great learning opportunities here. Yeah, I can see folks taking a lot of different roads on this one. Um, any, any, just before we go, any just brief tips or hints that in you know your experience in working with this data, anything you want to you want to highlight or flag for folks? 
Um, I, I think what I'd be wary of is kind of like like I said, the, the data is in decent shape, but but don't kind of just assume everything is perfect. Um, you know, you you're likely to kind of, especially with this type of data, sensor data, telematics data, you're likely to see some error records if you think about the the kind of speed that we're getting this data on every second, every minute. Um, there are likely to be some stray records. So I, I, I just say, you know, that first step, first two steps of kind of the data modeling, um, don't kind of just skim over that because um, it kind of looks easy. If you do this bit right, the analysis will be easy. So it's kind of just spending that time up front and really understanding how, how these tables interlink and, and what is it that, that that's being told here. I think that would be my key point is focus on the data model. Uh, it's 80% is kind of under the hood here in, in really understanding what's going on. Great, great. And so we're giving folks until 11.59 um, p.m. on uh, Sunday, January 6th. I'm sorry, February 6th. February, sorry, yeah. February 6th. So we'll have, we'll have all the, the details in the uh, comments section with the, the brief and the data posted on the the Enterprise DNA Forum. So, Harun, thank you so much for putting this together. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting stuck in on this myself and um, really looking forward to seeing what uh, what the community can do with this data. Definitely. Me, me, me too. And I, I think what will be interesting is kind of the the, the playbook to, to, to kind of what, once we've got the entries in, because I'm sure I'm going to learn so much from, from the way that other people have structured it. Um, in terms of optimizations, I think that that's the brilliance of, of kind of um, me getting to kind of run run this stuff by you guys after I've done it. It's kind of it's a great chance for me to kind of confirm what I've done um, and actually learn in terms of optimization and ideas going forward. Um, and like I said, guys, this is you know something that's used across the board in every industry, um, super relevant, um, and kind of links in nicely to kind of an end to end reporting solution for for your portfolio. Um, you know, I, I've done this, like I said, with OE and machines, but as, um, I've also done this with kind of um, telematics. So, you know, where, where are our machines? Um, how are they doing? What's the mileage? Um, mm -hmm. So you can kind of see the applications across the board. Great, great. All right. Well, thanks again. And we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing the, uh, the entries flowing in soon. That's all. Bye-bye. Thanks, Aaron. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.